Hello again, Saints. This is Rod Jones from One Lord, One Faith, One Baptism.net and Edifying the Body Ministries. And it is our endeavor to do just that, edify the members of his body. And what we're looking at today, we're looking at the Ephesians survey. And we're looking at the Ephesians survey and the Corinthian reproof. The Ephesians survey and the Corinthian reproof. This is lesson one. And this is the intro the or the overlay as you will and we're looking at the power and the father's will for the faith for the faithful sons the father's will for the faithful sons as i said at the outset there um it's a it's the ephesian survey but it's the corinthian reproof what we're looking at we're going to be looking at in this survey the ephesian survey we're going to be looking at at uh the book of corinthians as well but, you know, we, we left the Roman survey, and we went right to the Ephesian survey. And the, you know, someone said, well, why would you skip right over 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, uh, Galatians, and go right to the book of Ephesians? Well, the book of Ephesians is doctrine based upon uh, wisdom and God's, and God's will for the son and daughter in Christ. And that they be that they be strengthened, and they move from that that establishing that establishing that he says now to him that is of power to establish you. And there's but there's doctrine that the saints ought to be established in, and 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 continue to be established in. And I'm not saying that you can't find that in First Corinthians or Second Corinthians or the Book of Galatians, but there is reproof and correction doctrine. There's there's many of those things found in the book of Corinthians and the book of Second Corinthians, the book of Galatians that we're going to look at. But we're going to look at that. We're going to first get the foundational doctrine that's found in Ephesians here. And the one thing I want to say at the outset is, you know, I may mention about the power and, and, and the father's a will for faithful sons and daughters in Christ. When you look at the book of Ephesians, and what we're going to do today, we're going to look at, we're going to look at the whole first chapter there. We're going to look at the whole first chapter because what we're doing, we're just going to do an overlay of it, but then we're going to come back and do a verse, verse by verse, so to speak, and more and a more in depth survey study. But what I want to do is go over just an overlay of what's taking place here. And the importance of what we we're, what we are going to be seeing here, and about that God would have us to operate upon His power, and when He goes in 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 uh, verse eighteen, when it says that the the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling, and what is the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the mighty working of his power now just looking at those things there what is the mighty working of his power what was shown is that there are some things that that god would like would, would like for us to know that he would like for us to understand and have and have wisdom in what is the exceeding greatness of his power, mighty power to us word. Not in the sense of as some people when they look at these verses, all they see when they look at Ephesians chapter one, they all they see is, oh, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Um, we've been sealed. Um that's it. <laughs> and they only look upon it. As a, we're justified unto eternal life. Oh, we got hope in heavenly places. But as far as what God would desire for us to be, man does not understand that power. And when we get into the meat of the uh, of the study here, we're going to be looking at all those things there. When Satan himself talked about, he made a boast about the power being delivered unto him. And to whomsoever he will, he give it. God intended, and this is what we got to get. We need to really get this. God intended for the man to operate upon a power, to operate upon his power, and to have dominion 
And he talked about uh, a, a dominion over, over all cre uh, cre creatures here. And, and he talked, told them about subdue it. And uh, Satan, as he made that boast about he usurped that power from the man, he said, to whomsoever I will, I give it. And we too need to understand something. We'll get to the verses in a second. That when we see all the men of God that God instituted his power through, whether it was whenever, whenever God would make his power known, we have to think about that. Each time you look and see God making his power known through the man, whether it was Adam, uh, Noah, I mean, you just go down the list, Abram, you go down the list and, uh, of looking at Jacob, these were, this is, was, this was God putting forth in, in the face of Satan, in the face of the adversary, this is my power, this is my power, this is my power servant this is my son and that's what god that that that's what god is doing with us today that's what we need to get that's what we need to get we too are being shown by god when you get to the book of ephesians here it started over and well we see and we went over a little bit of that in romans 16 when you see now to him that is of power to establish you and then you've seen over there when, when it talks about, uh, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. When we are wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. We are instruments. We are his servants by which we too can bruise Satan. The God of peace, the doctrine of the God of peace can bruise Satan under our feet. In the battle, he's going to lose if we decide to operate upon this this the, the excellency of this power. What is the greatness, the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? And as I said before, when you look at uh, the certain mighty men, whether it was Moses, whether it was, as I said before, Jacob, and, and when, when it talked about as a prince, with Jacob and then with Moses and uh, Moses had the power of God working with him and when he threw that you know Satan could only counterfeit so much and there was a time when Satan couldn't do what God uh, he couldn't counterfeit the power of God but today we see people doing it every day and, and as I said before a lot of people all they teach about is the justification unto eternal life the 10,000 instructors in Christ or they skip your past and tell you what you have in Christ because he justified you into eternal life and he saved you. Now you don't have to go to hell anymore. But all this power God desires, sons and daughters, that he can say, that's my son. That's, you see that power. Satan desires to speak reproachfully of us. And he can speak reproachfully if we are not operating upon the power of God, but we are operating upon the power of the air and that's how we're gonna we're gonna end it off we're gonna go to ephesians 2 verse 2 looking at looking at that power of the air in contrast with the power he just gave us in chapter one he he, he goes in chapter two and then he talks about that the power of this world and how men how we used to operate upon that but now he would have us to operate upon his power the book of ephesians it ends off talking about that whole armor be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then it tells you about the armor, the word of God. You putting that on. Again, folks, this is amazing to understand. And, and let's just get to let's get the verse one here. Ephesians one, ver, Ephesians one, verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to go go um, verse, I'm just doing it now, but I'm not going to go verse by verse by verse by verse and break down each verse right now because, as I said before, this is only the introduction and, and time is, uh, <laughs> you know, 
Uh, you know, I've, I've done videos an hour and 20 something minutes before I look up and it's, you know, you know, so let's just move on. But in looking at that there, it's Paul, he says, by the will of God to the faithful in Christ. And some would say, wait a minute, you're going to tell me it's not to all saints? Are all saints going to be faithful in Christ? No. It's God's will that they would be. It's Paul's will also that they would be. It's the Lord and Savior's will that they that they would be, that they would take the doctrine that's given, that Paul is that been revealed unto Paul. And and that they would and that they would accept it. And that they too would operate and desire to be those soldiers. But let's let's move on. Look at um verse two. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father. Notice this, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, it says, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have, why would you? Why do you think it's God the Father is being mentioned twice? Why is it that God the Father, as a Father, is being mentioned twice here? Well, we know we could just look at it and see. Well, yeah, it says our Father, and then it says Jesus Christ's Father. But the point of it all, the why of it, the why of it is, God wants you to understand something that. He looks upon, he is, he looks at the Lord and Savior. And when it, when we, we're going to look at it in a minute, when it talks about who first, who first trusted, when it talks about who first trusted Christ, who first trusted Christ as a son, as, as, as one in whom he's well pleased. And when you see that, that likeness there, we are being shown in a likeness. Well, he's the father of our Lord and Jesus, Savior Jesus Christ. He's our father too. There's a likeness there as with the Lord and Savior, as sons, faithful sons. And when we're look, when we see this again, it, it, there there is a there's something that we ought to understand about titles. And when you see when it says the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, he is, yeah, he's God, but he's also, if it said the, if it said, uh, well, I know that that's not going to say that, but if someone said to me, um, the foreman of Rod Jones or the wife of Rod Jones or the daughter of Rod Jones, you're going to know to look in that likeness to say, hmm, I, now I know what to, what the context should, should be about. This person is being, this is going to, this is explaining to me about a father to son relationship here. And that that father and son relationship should not be overlooked as just, oh, God, the father. God, oh, my father, my father, my God. And people don't understand what a father does. A father educates a son in his will, in his love, his ways. We know that. We, we who are watching that. That, 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 that is a father or mother to a child. What, what do we look upon? We don't take that for granted. We don't take for granted our mother and father and what, they've, um, what they are to us. And, and not, they're not just a every, they're not just like the neighbor down the street. We can't put, when we look at the titles and when, when it speaks of God, or when it speaks about the, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, or when it says Christ Jesus, or when it says God our Savior, or we have to look at the context, but I'm spending too much time on this here with the father-son issue. But what we see, we're going to get to it in the first study, next study there. But what we see take place here is a father-to-son relationship that you need. You have to get and understand that. 
And, and, and that's what that's what's going to be the focal point here, because next we're going to see about the adoption of children. Next, you're going to see about what God want to gather all into one. Next, we're going to see about about he, he's going to uh, his overall plan. We are the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And that's what we desire of our children. But let, let's move on. Look at, um, um, again, verse 3. Who hath blessed us, and I'm going to go, blessed be God the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, notice how it was shown God our Father, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's talking about God being the Father of Jesus Christ, but he turns back to us and says, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Wait a minute. So what this is showing here is that, that likeness, that Jesus Christ, re remember what Christ said on the cross? He said, all power is given unto me and things of that nature. And, and, and he, he, he made mention about, about that power being given unto him and, and all things. And, and scripture talks about all things was the, all spiritual blessings. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God, had, God has also, as our father, gave unto us in the same verse there, speaking about the Lord and Savior, the Father of our Lord and Savior, uh, Father of our Lord and Savior, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, look at the next verse here. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, of the world what we need to understand when you're looking at that is when God before the world began when God had a foreknown plan to bit to to form the world all those things you see over in Job 37 38 39 about God creating the world when God had that foreknown plan to do that God also foreknown we were in that thought process we were, and we, you have to get grasp that, folks. That is significant to understand. We too, and I don't mean individually, like he, 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 he knew us from our mother's womb and all this other stuff. No, as a people, as a, as you're gonna see, the adoption of children, and he, it, and we can be parts of that, a part of that, if we desire to live on to him. And someone said, wait a minute, oh, so you got to live on to him to, 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 uh, uh, to be a part of the adoption of children? It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what does the next part says? Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's selfless love. That's sanctification. That's that we should be holy. That's what God designed that we be. He chosen before, be, chosen before the world. That we be that holy and without blame. Are all saints going to be holy and without blame before him in love? No. But God desires our, our sanctified life. He desires us to operate upon uh, to be sons. And, and, and some some get get uh get upset when they hear the word sonship. But when you look at when you look upon a father working in his son. He's working in his son, a workmanship in his son that that son can be in his likeness. That the father would, would pass down to his son or daughter. He passed down his likeness or she, the mother, would pass down in her likeness. And, 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 and the idea that that child be what they desire that they would be and that they will operate upon their love and operate upon their will, their ways. They, 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 we don't just uh, have a child and leave them in the lurch. A, a, a child don't come with a, a, with a, with a survival backpack. A, a child does not come with those things and, and, and take care of him, uh, him or her own self. And we think, oftentimes we, we think that that's how God dealt with us. 
that God desires that. Oh, he justified us. We're, we're a child of God. We're children. We're an heir of God. But we, they think that that's okay. Now you skip to skip to the it's like a person has has a child and they just send them somewhere else and they say, OK, now you're ready to run my company. You're an adult now. So come on over. Even though you didn't get any education by the father to understand that the business is going to be ran into the ground. It, it couldn't work. It'd be impossible to work to have someone else's understanding and wisdom. God doesn't want us to operate upon the wisdom of this world while we are saved. And same thing as I said before, you take an owner of a company, he has a child, and he just sends him out there to the world and then expects him to come when he's 18 years old to run the company. He's not going to understand anything about the father's way. Again, looking at this here, now let's look at um, verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That's self, that's his love, his selfless love. Verse five, having predestinated us. Notice that having predestinated us. Wait, he, he, he gave us, he predestinated us unto something called the adoption of children. We're going to get into what all that's about in the next couple studies. But he predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, notice this, by Jesus Christ, to himself. When people see that, all they think about is, oh, yeah, because of Christ died for us. No, it, it, everything we're looking at now is the doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Every single word is the doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we ought to have dwelling richly within us. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, notice this here, to himself. Because isn't Jesus Christ? Where is Jesus Christ sitting? On the right hand, he to himself, according to the what? Good pleasure of his will. According to the good pleasure of his will. There's a lot there, folks. You know what? And when you see this here, over, you want to see certain words here in chapter one, just praise, honor, and glory. Good pleasure. You're going to see it again good, uh, according to his good pleasure. What did God say in the beginning when he was creating all things? It is good. It is good. He saw it. It said the Lord saw it and it was good. What do you think the Lord did when he predestinated us unto the adoption of children? He saw that that was good according to his good pleasure. It was according to his, to his will. Before the foundation of the world, God, it was to his good pleasure that we be not just only just justified unto eternal life. And then on our way to heavenly places, as, as, as some people put emphasis only on those things, folks. When, when you got preachers that preach that, oh, my, my, my biggest goal is to, is to get souls saved. You know, that's what the, the Baptist um, religion does, you know. You know, you get people, for the most part, quite a few, a lot of them are justified unto eternal life. But again, what reward do you, you, you get a special reward because, oh, well, at least they're saved. It, what, do you, what do you think, Paul, Paul talks about the, the Corinthians were saved, the Galatians were saved. You, you think, look at what Paul talked about their state. He Look how he talked about their standing. They were after the world. They were being educated, not by the Father, not by not operating upon his holy word, but operating upon the world. And that's what the Baptist does. You say, well, wait a minute, man. They, they go to church. They, they sing songs. They, 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 they give praise, honor, and glory. They go knocking on doors. Well, I tell you what, if a Corinthian were here, one of the Corinthians were here today, you would probably think that guy was the most spiritual. But the idea is they were trying to live their life unto the Galatians as, as well. They were really religious. 
but they were not operating and following his word and how to do it. They were following the traditions and rudiments of the men, of, of men and so does the Baptist. They, they, Every single thing, as I said before, folks, and I don't, I, you know, and, and, and I, I hate to, all, I hate to, um, you know, sound abrasive about this and things like that. But you know what? There's a lot at stake here, folks. Your father's power is at stake here. You're, you're going to either operate upon his power or the power, uh, power of the air in the course of this world. And as I said before, any and everything that the denominations do, Baptists included, it's all wrong. Other than preaching salvation from the debt and penalty of sin against the man and understanding how a man can obtain the righteousness of God. Every single other thing in there is wrong. You, you, we're, it's not taught in his word. I, I, I see what's, what's done in, in those places. All those things, all it does is glorify the man and the people watching or listening to it. It, it. it just stirs their heart. But your heart ought to be before, without blame, holy, before him, not before some preacher or some church creed or tradition, but before him, without blame, holy, without blame, before him in love. His selfless love, not, not the love of some denomination. Let's move on here. Come over to uh, look at look at verse um, verse uh, five again. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His of His will. Notice that according to the good pleasure of His will. Remember, as I said before, in the beginning, it is good to the praise of the glory of His grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Notice he predestinated us, he made us, but to the praise of the glory of his grace. Now that's how you praise and glory, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. To the praise of the glory of his grace. That's his grace. Not someone because they got a a church and they got the word grace on it. It's his grace. Forget about somebody else's uh, tradition and way they do things. Wherein he hath made us accepted in what a pastor so-and-so said? No. In the beloved. See, folks, you know what? Again, we, we can't follow man. We, we, we truly can't. Everything, and I said this before, where did I learn it from? Yeah, well, you know, we do this and we do where did you learn it from? Hey, we're going to take prayer requests and, and someone praying because they're, they're so-and-so sick or their so-and-so's family just died. And, and what they actually mean, not that, that they, they desire that you pray, that their inward man be strengthened by his word and that they operate upon that and, or their family operates upon that strengthening and use 2 Corinthians chapter, the whole book of 2 Corinthians for what it's designed to be used for. And use Philippians, the, the suffering, the, 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 the salvation doctrine from sufferings for what that too is designed to be worked for. That's not what they mean. They mean a first Corinth, they mean a Corinthian type of thinking that God is, can and will heal if it's his will to do so. That's what they're after with these prayer requests, that God would, would, would make something happen, make it rain on their, on their physical lives. And I'm talking about them that rightly divide the word of truth, folks. I'm not, anything I say is not going to be about any, it's all, of, it, it's about what we see and what's going on in, in, in grace, you know. But when it says here, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us, except in the beloved, these are uh, uh, provisions. He predestinated us. He made us. These are provisions he gave us as his sons and daughters. Why do you think all we see is it be, made us accepted in the beloved? People think that's talking about justification unto eternal life. It, it, that's not what, it's according to his will. And I understand us being justified unto eternal life, you know, it, it, it is, it's part of his will. But also even things like our death, our death brings forth and shows forth that victory. 
Where's thy sting? Great, oh great, where's thy sting? It, there's glory in that. We don't talk about that part of it. But when we look at these verses, where it's to his honor and glory, his praise, and that he what he predestinated us unto, that 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 he 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 made us accepted. But look at the um verse seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now, in this here, everyone will say, hey, man, brother, come. because people can accept this part of it, in whom we have redemption, we have it, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. I want you to get verse 8 and not just only get verse 7 all the time. Verse 8, wherein he hath abounded toward us. Yeah, this is another thing he's done. And, and, and you know, it, we, we oftentimes spend too much time on verse 7. But he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom. Notice that, all wisdom, not just with, but prudence and prudence. These are things that he has done for us. These are these are all everything you're going to see here is all the spirit, the spiritual blessings. In heavenly places, you, you this is the table of contents. You have what's all spiritual blessed in heavenly places made us accepted. He hath abounded toward us. He hath um, all, all those things that this, that, that, this, this, that, that. You want to know what they are? Here they are right here. Healing your flesh, healing your mortal ungodly flesh is not on the list, folks, nor is giving you traveling grace. That's not on that list either. Uh, putting on your heart to say something is not on that list either. You're not going to find it there. You won't find it there because it's not contained there. That's not, that's not of his good pleasure to heal your loved one either physically. It's of his good pleasure that you be strengthened with the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Allow the excellency of the power to dwell richly within you. We are killed all the day long. It, it, our, our sufferings work with force a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. These, it, look not the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Don't look at what you see and, and, and go, ask, go ask around for prayer requests. The, it, prayer requests ought to be done. And, of course, you, you're asking for consolation doctrine given unto you. You're asking for supplication doctrine given unto you. That's the way it ought to be. But we have many people today praying without understanding. And it's, it's sad, folks. You know, it's sad and it could, it could get you worked up in a sense. But the idea, and, and we, you know, and when I look at this, I believe me, I, I judged. I judged in how, how I ought to view things, how I ought to say things. And, and what I see, God would not have um, someone tiptoeing around, a, 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 a workman that is approved unto God ought not to be, be pleasing men and tiptoeing around when someone is walking, when someone's a Corinthian or a Galatian. It, it, did Paul hold back and call? I, he called them foolish. He called the Corinthian babes. You call someone today a babe or foolish in grace and see, see what happens. But the idea, again, the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us, folks. That's the point. And when you see this verse here, where, uh, wherein he hath, uh, hath abounded toward us in all. If you're being abound toward in him, if he abounded, he abounded toward us all wisdom. That's all wisdom that he would have us to know. All wisdom and prudence. That's everything that he would desire that we would know. And some would say, oh, we, we'll never know all the counsel of God. Notice this here in verse 9. Having made known unto us. These are all provisions, all things he has done. He hath abounded in verse 8. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Notice again, having made known unto us 
the mystery of his will. So here you see in verse 8, he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. He made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed us, purposed in himself. And as I said before, God purposed that in himself before the foundation of the world. Remember, we looked at good pleasure, good pleasure. Do you know it's his good pleasure that you be, uh, that you, you understand the mystery of his will? That you understand his will and not understand this world's will? I seen a preacher doing a, doing a study on, um, on the election, you know, and it, it you know, it, 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 it's sad. Doing a lecture, doing a study on the election and, and showing different graphs of percentage of age and percentage of this and percentage of that. No edification at all because you know why? Because there's nothing else, he has nothing, nothing, nothing else to teach about. He desires that, that he, he would teach on why there's no red wave uh, it, with the election. Who cares? What worry about being the election? of sons, the adoption and the election of, worry about those elect. Worry about it being a spiritual wave. That That's where the, 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 the pastor's attention ought to be on. Edifying the members of his body, not educating them on something that you can get from a news outlet. But again, it's sad because many people, many people view, watch the person, you know. They, they, they actually feel that they've been helped by him. Many many people but it, it, it's just sad folks it's it's truly truly sad but but um as you see here it's god's good pleasure that that he made known to us before the foundation of the world that we understand the mystery of his will that we have all wisdom according to what he dispensed to us that we would know we can know we have the ability to know everything that paul New, and I'm not saying those. There was verses where it says uh, he, he didn't you know, over second second Corinthians twelve when when he says there's some things which are not to be uttered. I'm talking about that Paul would desire, and the Father, and the Lord and Savior, and the Holy Ghost would desire that we would know, we can know all wisdom. That's, what do you think Paul says? Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding of what something all things. And, and, and that, that's what we ought to have, folks. We could have that every single day. We can understand all things. You turn to this verse. Oh, wow. You know, get an understanding in all things. It's a renewing of our mind daily. But look, look at verse uh, verse 10. That in the dis notice that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things which are in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on the on earth in him. Now notice what's being said here when it talks about knowing the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. It, it's not only just that, but what we need to understand here is God would desire that we would know his plan and his purpose with the heaven and earth when he would gather in one all things in Christ Jesus, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth. Notice this here, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Wait a minute. So you see here an inheritance in, in two places over here. The, the in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. The, and that's not just only because we're justified unto eternal life, that inheritance, as being a child of God or being uh, being an heir, being pre predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. You you think now, see, some people say, well, no, no, brother, that's, that's talking about he saved us and it's his will to save us and justify us unto eternal life and that's what that's talking about there. And now we, we go to heavenly places and we're going to be parts of the principalities, mites, thrones, and dominions. That's not what it's talking about. You look at verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. And I said, well, 
Yeah, see, it, you think this is to the, to the praise of his glory that we only just be justified unto eternal life? He just got through explaining about all wisdom and all prudence and and and, and um and, and made known unto the mystery of his will that and he talks about the overall plan. He desires that, that he has sons and daughters in Christ that are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you don't think so, wait till you get a couple verses later. But look at the next verse here. Verse 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of the truth, of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that ye were ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You know that right there is as, as far as a lot of people get. They they go they go to Ephesians and, and they look at they got a, a couple couple hot verses and, and, and they this is the one here. Something that they many have been saved for 30 years and, and then they they keep going back here teaching people about you're sealed. You can't lose your salvation. You're sealed. You can't lose your salvation. That's the, that, that's the most foundational thing you should have understood and, 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 and not teach it again to the saved. Teaching it again to the saved is a waste of time. Why would you teach to a person that they're, you know, you look at the world. A person is not going to keep teaching to someone. Hey, I don't care what job you, you go into. Who's going to teach you how to punch in again? Well, you know, you got to go and punch in at the clock and then you go punch out. Person like, okay, thank you, first day. Now, 20 years later, you're teaching them again how to keep doing the same exact thing. Well, you're on the clock. Again, that's it, it, this is what we see, folks. But look at the next verse. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the re until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of, notice this, his glory, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And when you, when you look at that, the praise of his glory, the earnest of our inheritance, it speaks of that there is more to being a son and the adoption and adoption children that's spoken over here. We'll get it. I, I don't want to jump the gun and, and go into these different inherit the inheritance here, issues here yet. So I, I'm going to just hold off on that right now. But what I'm after here is the unto the praise of his glory again. Notice praise. His, not your glory, his glory. Wherefore also after I heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus, and what notice this, the love unto all the saints. Now, praise of his glory is not you giving praise in, 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 in a church building saying, you know, uh, the same songs over and over again, which is repetitive. It's not your heart. Those, you know, and I understand about intent, and, and, I, and I get that. But I truly understand what true song unto the Lord is. You can, you can do it. It could be a... a uh, a 10, 10 word song. You don't have to sit over again. You don't have to have a chorus for it. The, you sing in the praises and, uh, and, and glory from your heart unto the Father. For singing, singing his his the word, the, the, the praise and glory of the word. Singing that out. Or singing within your heart. Not the same thing over and over on page 221 or something like that. Something someone else wrote. As I said before, the saints 300 years ago, 400, 500 years ago didn't have those things. What did, what did they lack? The ones in Paul's day, they didn't have those same hymn books. What, what did they lack? But look, look at the next verse here, you know. Um, look at verse... Uh, 16, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glories. Notice this again, that the that the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, notice the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of him. Notice God our Father, God of our Lord, 
Why do you think the God of our Lord is being mentioned? Jesus Christ and the Father of glory. It says, may give unto you the spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Once being mentioned, as I said before, folks, that's a likeness. That's showing Jesus Christ's father, the God, God of. Now notice God is going to be used because it's going to be getting into some things that to show his, I don't want to say his godness, but he's going to be getting to his power. But he he just we just got through showing, he's got through showing an overall God had an overall plan as God. And in that plan, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and what he accomplished is in that. We too is are in that as well. He's predestinated. He he uh, he, he, he he gave us unto being part of that, along with Israel and things on this earth here that they are also going to be part of. Even the ones that's going to be in the lake of fire are part of, are part of a plan, a part of what God designed. But look at look at verse um, eighteen. Well, I'll read verse 17 again, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Notice the spirit of wisdom within your inner man, your inner man. Paul desires, and this is his, this is his prayer. We, we, we don't pray this to people. We rather pray for things that, 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 that work outside of our inner man. We pray for things that concern our flesh. Someone would say, you know, my, my so-and-so is about to go do this. All they have to do is just say that. Well, I'm praying that, you know, prayers, throw three hand prayers up. This here is Paul's prayer that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory and we're going to look at those titles when we get into that. Why it's so important to understand each time you see God of our Lord or the Father of our Lord. And then why this is being said in this particular verse here. May give unto you. And that's when you put your nose in the book, folks. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Only way you're going to get the knowledge of him, folks, is you have to read his word. That's how you get the knowledge of him from his own work, from his own mouth, given unto the men to write it down by the Holy Ghost. That's the only way you're going to get it. Give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Your inner man have wisdom and revelation. Look at verse 18. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now notice. Paul's praying that we have within our inner man the, the wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's all knowledge of him. That that's it's not just only you just get justified unto eternal life and you wait on the rapture to come and you go systematically on Sundays uh, at, at ten Bible study, eleven o'clock uh, service or worship they call it, uh, and then it's maybe seven o'clock Sunday night and Wednesday. Because that's the way the world does. That's why we do that stuff, because the world does it. Why does it have to be at that time? Why can't it be at 1 o'clock? Why can't it be at 2 o'clock? Hey. Um, again, why can't it be a whole different day? But that's your, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. You take your understanding, folks, when you got the wisdom and the revelation of his word uh, uh, onto you. Now you have your understanding, that your eyes of your understanding be enlightened, be more enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. See, the reason why I said we're going to get into the inheritance situation, because the word inheritance is being used here quite a bit. It's a reason why. Because as sons and daughters in Christ, and I hate to use the word sonship, God is talking about there's a plan and purpose that he has for us. We have a, we play a big part in that. He has an inheritance that he would like to give on to us, that we'd be a part of. There, there, there's, and you're going to see in a minute. We are to know 
all these things, the knowledge of his word, all spiritual wisdom and understanding, and all wisdom and prudence. And we understand the knowledge of him as sons, ones that your inheritance don't just involve you when you became saved 20 years ago. And then now you're part of his inheritance. That's not what's being shown here. Again, um, I don't know. It, 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 it's people teach what people teach about uh, our adoption of sons. It, it, it's just sad. They're they're robbing people um, of of all what's being shown here of of inheritance. Look at look at verse um, look at verse nineteen. And what is the exceeding? Let's go back to verse eighteen. The eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your understanding, be enlightened that you may know, know what is the hope of his calling. See, the hope of his calling, he has a calling that we be more than just justified unto eternal life. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Now, I want you to get this because this all involves that inheritance. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance? See, there's more than just, just part of the inheritance, you being saved. There's more riches of the glory. That's to his glory, not your, not your glory, because oh, I don't have to go to hell no more. Oh, you know, it's more to, it's the riches of his glory. And look at what the next verse says here. The riches of his glory. Of, his inher of the inheritance in the saints, verse 18 says, and what is the exceeding greatness? You take the word greatness. This is exceeding greatness. Not just only greatness, but exceeding greatness of his power. That, that, that's what you get. That's what you have. That's what he's dishing out to us. He's dishing out to us for us to know what, if you're going to know it, aren't you going to have to, He's, you're knowing it to operate upon it, folks. That's why you're knowing it. You're knowing it's for so you can know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. So you're you're able to not only just know it, but to operate upon it, to allow that to work in you as a son in this adoption. Then you're being you're being shown in Christ likeness as a son. You're going to see here with this power here. You're also being, you're going to be putting his power on display. As I said before at the outset, when you look at many of the mighty men in God's word of truth, they all were operating upon the exceeding greatness of his power to them, which believed. They believed they, they were justified unto eternal life. God wasn't, God wasn't going to have unregenerated men preaching his word, being a prophet of the Lord. But they were also justified unto eternal life. And they operate upon. I'm not talking about all of them. I'm talking about the ones we see, as I said before, the David, the, the Solomon, the the uh, uh, all the ones that God's put made known his power. God can show God shows in his word. And he shows this man operate, John the Baptist. They all operate upon his power. And we, too, are being shown and given that we, too, can operate upon this power. It's ours if we decide to operate upon, give up our, of our, be a, be a living sacrifice. Operate upon selflessness for his sake. But look at, look at this again. 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? And that's not saying that it's to us uh, because we, we were saved, his power in saving us. It's to those that are saved, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are saved, who are already saved. You can know, you could have been saved 20 years ago, but now know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us. According to the working, notice this working of his mighty power. How many times we have to see you have greatness of his power, but not just only greatness, exceeding greatness of his power to us 
And then according to the working of his mighty power, when you, when you see something about working of it, that's working effectually within us. Remember, it, it said exceeding greatness of his power to us and uh, by the working of his mighty power because it does, it, it is mighty. And, and when you see something that says mighty, it's showing its might in regards to something else because something can stand, you, you could take something that uh, could stand alone. It, if there was only one, say, cell phone, you know, it wouldn't be so mighty if there was only one and only one kind, only one type. It wouldn't be so mighty. But in contrast of something else, it, it can show something has a greater power than the other. And what's being shown here is in view of Satan's power. Well, we are to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power and what is according to the working of his mighty power. And, you know, we, we, we can possess that. We can possess that as, as his sons, as his son, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, possessed it. And I, I, well, I don't mean as, because, it, of course, we know there's many things the Lord did. And, and with that, I'm not talking about the healing of the sick, raising the dead. I'm not talking about he, he went to be tempted 40 days and came back in all power, came back in the spirit, spirit of the Lord and, and power. I mean, spirit, you know what I mean. But what I'm saying is operate upon this power. Is as sons that we can we we too can operate upon. And when you see just Job himself, when the Lord said, "Have you considered my servant Job?" We too are ones that the Lord can say, "Have you considered my son?" Fill in the blank. Now remember, Satan was, speaks of us reproachfully, and he could, but we can bruise Satan under our feet when we are operating upon this power. We can be God's champion, his soldier. Why do you think that those words are used, soldier, are, are used there? Because you're in a battle. Well, you might not think you are, but your father is. You know, you, you might be one that, a person that's like a person in the army, you know, in the military. They drop you out of the plane. They drop you out of a plane. They push you out of a plane and, and with a parachute, and you leave your, your weapon behind. You forget your backpack. You you had your shoes off. You forget your boots, and you and you're getting ready to be. You're, you're falling down. You don't have the armor. And many people today, folks, they go into this, and and they 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 turn every day to God's word, and they only go so far, only so many verses, and they, and and then they and they and they teach about testimony, prayer requests, and and all these different things, and, and song and dance, and everything else, and they don't have the armor on. And they leave people out of there at, at 1130 or, or, or 12 o'clock, 1230, whatever it is. And they have no armor either, nor do they have what's being shown here. They do not have their eyes, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened. They don't have that either. But look at the next verse. Look at the next verses here. Uh, we'll look at verse 19 again. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. You know, notice this here. According to the working, let's read verse 19 again. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly place, heavenly places. Do you notice what's being said there? That there is power in that verse. He's showing that what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, where I know I said him more than I should, well, not more than I should. Over and over here, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. Do you see that power there? Do you see that likeness? Do you see the identity that you have with Christ as a son or servant, a, a, one that a, a, one that's working? And I'm not calling Christ a servant there, but we know he's looked upon as that. 
And that's what he said unto the Father. But what I'm saying is that we are looked in his likeness as father to son. Father to son there. Christ, the Father gave unto uh, to, to the Son power, which he wrought in Christ. It, it's supposed to be wrought in us too. Could be. You got to put your nose in the book and understand the doctrine here, folks, of how powerful Ephesians is. That just chapter one here. That's just only wait till we get into the other chapters there, folks. It, it, it's it's exceeding greatness. Put it like that. And but notice here, it's that likeness. Now, l l let's read on there. Look at uh, verse 20, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly place. Now, you know that he was, the Lord was well pleased when he did that. And notice the purpose. He raised him at his own right hand. And it, it says here um, in heavenly places, far above all principality and power, and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also that which has come but notice far above this is what his plan was that the lord be more than just a son but that he is far above all do you notice do you notice the the mighty the mightiness the the most high gods being put on display as well the power he's shown far above all that is that is named all that is of a principality, a power, a might. Not only in this world, but that which is also to come. And I put all things under his feet. Hey, wait a minute. Put all things under his feet? We were just told in Romans 16 that we can bruise Satan under our feet. We know in, in, in uh, Galatians, I mean, uh, Genesis 3, 316. Bruise Satan under, uh, uh, under his heel. Again, you see that you see that um, that um, comparison to one power defeating another power. You are part of that, folks. You're part of that. You can be part of that power. You can be part of that, and that's what the likeness is showing here. Jesus Christ likeness and what God set for Him to be, set for Him to be, and and put all things under His feet, far above all. But we're to know what is exceeding greatness of his power to us word. And as you're seeing here, it is an overall plan that God, God has. But we are also part of that plan. And let's look at that. And have put, verse 22, and have put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things. Notice this, to the church. Gave him to be all things, be the head. And who's right under the head, folks? We are. He's the head, we're the body. And being the body, if if the head is doing something, if the head is doing something, you think the body's not involved? You think the head is going to say, hey, I'd like to go over there, but then the body goes somewhere else? No. You're one. It's not separate. If, if the Lord and Savior's in a battle and our Father's in a battle, we're not in the battle. What do we need the armor for? We just jump out of a plane and with no parachute. Oh no, we wouldn't do that. We'll we'll make sure we save ourselves. We'll we'll definitely have a parachute on. But everything else, oh, we forget about that. What do we need? What do we need the um, a compass for? What do we need uh, all the other the weapons for? What do we need that for? But. Let's look at this and we'll finish up here. Look at verse 22 again. And I put thing, all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. It's to our benefit as well. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And you think if, if, if we're his fullness that filleth all in all, it's to his praise, honor, and glory. You think that's according to his good pleasure? You think he would say, it is good? Of course. That was his intent in the beginning. His intent, we've been predestinated unto all this. 
when God was creating and forming the world and all those things that shown, he, he also, we were part of that plan thought and thought process. In his heart, he, he desired sons and daughters that would be as the ones that we have record of in, in the book. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But them who desire to live unto themselves are gonna are gonna not suffer suffer persecution, but they're gonna they're gonna be Galatian and Corinthian. But let's look at something here in Ephesians chapter two. We're just gonna look at the first two verses here, and then we'll get ready to close this time. <laughs> look at uh, Ephesians chapter two, verse one. And you notice after he said, and put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things, which is his body that filleth all in all, that filleth uh, fullness of him that filleth all in all. And then notice the, the contrast, the identity, and you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. When people see this, all they see is, oh, see, he saved us. And no, quickened mean made alive with a purpose. Made alive with a purpose. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Notice this. Wherein ye in time past walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience here. But earlier we saw what he would have us to know in our spirit. That we would know these things. That, that, that we, would, we wouldn't just only be just justified or only know only just that. But we also, within our spirit, would know what is the riches of his glory to us. To know what is the uh, uh, all wisdom and all prudence in our inner man. But not operate upon the prince of the power of the air. Not operate upon that spirit. But in our spirit ought to be operating his word alone. And I'm going to tell you like this, you know, operating upon certain things like church traditions, pastor anniversary days, and all these different things. That's the, that's the, the, the power of the air. That's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You, you, we look at these things and we think, well, that's got to be talking about killing, stealing, fornicating, adultery, this, that, the, the obvious sinful thing. No. God, the, we're being taught by our father that Satan designed a, a course for this world to deceive them who are justified unto eternal life and deceive, deceive those who think they're saved and to we know who are who the Lord is at battle with and it's not it was never those uh, the Ephesians the ones that were I mean, the Diana worshipers, the ones that are already unsaved, given to this world, it was the ones that thought that they were serving the true and living God. That was his enemy. That was uh, his enemy. And even those, whether it's Nebuchadnezzar or, or others that were um, Pharaoh, that were going after Israel, their enemy, uh, his enemy was still those guys. Because Satan was working with those men. Again, I'm gonna say this, and we'll get ready to close. And we'll, and, 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 um, we ought to operate upon His power, and understand what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe, and understand it's by according to His the working of His mighty power that we are we are sons and daughters to live unto Him, and you know. Again, as I said before, you know, I, 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 I try, it, it, it really could, it, it's actually sad, but it really could get a person upset in a sense, or maybe I might sound like I am, but I hope I don't. But what, what I'm, I, I'm, I'm, um, your father is serious about his power. He is actually, uh, he understands the importance and we ought to as well. And of course, and, and using the word serious about it or importance about it, it is actually diminishing what his view is about his power. And, and notice when it talks about it, far above all, 
principality and power, every name that is named, it, put all things under his feet because you have the Father's power and his might and you have Satan's power that he boasted of and that he, uh, the, the power of the air that men follow and, and even them who are justified unto eternal life, they follow that power of Satan, the power of the air because they're operate upon what this world would have. And remember, just a verse like Ephesians 6, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He's talking to justified people, folks. Uh, he's not just knowing that you're going to be. He would say, I thank God that ye are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I, I thank God that ye are, that, that your eyes of your understanding is enlightened. Because a saint cannot operate upon his power. If you're not operating upon his power, you're going to be operating upon the power of the air, Satan's power. That's the point. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And until next time, thank you.